I turn around, the church is going to be full, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, my thank you for you getting out on this very damp morning. I was surprised to walk out and see rain on the cars at our house this morning again. And it does look like New Year's Eve will be stormy here, just like Christmas morning was, or Christmas Eve morning was. So stay high and dry. Be careful when you're out driving. Um, you have announcements before you. Church council members, please remember to get reports in by the 2nd of January. Um, our congregational meeting is at the end of January. So um, please keep that date in mind. And for council members, that means you've got to be here and be ha having your things turned into the office so we can publish an annual report for the congregation. I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas. Hardly seems that it was just yesterday. Um, but as you can tell, a lot of people are sleeping in this morning. Um, in, including yours truly's family, except for Jesse, who's an early riser. And they all kind of crashed this morning. So um, take time to read the anniversaries and birthdays. I have my 37th anniversary of ordination coming up at the end of the month. And of course, our son Jeremiah has a New Year's Eve birthday. He was the last baby born in the county. Best tax deduction in the world. <laughs> and back then, you got the whole year's credit. You didn't get just a portion of the year. So um, it helped, really helped our taxes out that year. And besides that, he's a very special and wonderful young man. So um, some of you may have met Juan Pluma at our 50th anniversary party. He's getting married tomorrow. At, at the party, I told Juan, who is a longtime friend of our son Joshua's, and we've had him at Disney World with us when we went one year, we took Juan with us. And he's never a problem, never, never has had an issue when we've been out with him. Um, besides that, he speaks more languages fluently uh, and did in high school too. So um, we call him the Rice Krispie Treat King. First thing I said to him when he walked into our party was, do you have Rice Krispies stuffed in your pocket? Uh, he's now 35 years old. Uh, he says, no, I gave those up a while back. Um, but anyway, my son Joshua got licensed. He's coming over to do Juan's wedding. Um, so he's going to be here tomorrow in Phoenix doing the wedding and back to Colorado 23 hours later, so it's a quick trip over the mountains for him. So we'll pray for Josh for safe travel by air and for all the people who are traveling by air uh, throughout this week. And then um, again for Juan and his wife, and you know what, her, head, her name just went out of my head. Uh, his future wife tomorrow uh, for their marriage. So thank you all very much for getting out this morning. Hymns are not necessarily um, ones you may know well. Oh, is this just on finally? No, it was on. Oh, before. okay. I can get closer. <laughs> uh, so you can. I'll try to sing all verses in the hymns that you are, may not be too familiar with. That may mean I make more musical mistakes on the piano. Um, so just be patient with me, please. Um, Christmas Eve about wore my hands and my brain out, so <laughs> um, I'll, I'll do my very best this morning. Of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 285.
and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the second reading. went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went, went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human favor. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I suspect you know the next hymn. Maybe by memory.
the switch on the way. I think. Yes. Oh, that is so bright. <laughs> We had two examples today in our scripture, one from a psalm and then another from a writing of Paul, who give us very different approach, approaches for how you and I should be involved in magnifying the glory and power of our God, who has given us his son, Jesus Christ. The first was exuberant. That psalm should not be read with any degree of calm it should be read with excitement and joy and a heart filled with thanksgiving to God for all that God has done. All of the creation that has been his doing that surrounds us every day and even we ourselves who are God's creation. But then Paul takes us in a little different direction. He helps us to understand that it isn't all marching down the street with tambourines and horns blowing. It isn't all standing on the corner and shouting praise to God. It takes more than that. One would think that would be enough, but what it really takes is the kind of living that is filled with Christ. It takes prayer and thoughtfulness. It takes knowing in one's heart for yourself and for others the comfort and peace of the victory that has already been won over sin and death by Jesus Christ. It takes generosity and a sense of knowing that everything that is ours has first belonged to God and everything that we have has been a gift from God in our lives. We might even go so far as to say that all things that have happened to us have been a gift from God to bring us to where we are today. Some of those things may have been very difficult and very tough. But in the midst of those very difficult and tough things, God has kept his promise to never leave us alone, but to surround us with his love and grace and forgiveness. And for that, the psalmist wants to really jump up and down and really proclaim and let the whole world know, perhaps most especially the other nations of the world, for those who were responding to this psalm in Israel and Judah, but to let everyone know who doesn't already know God that there is an incredible reason to give thanks and praise to this creator of all things, to the God who provides for his children out of generosity, with a sense of a sense of abundance and presence. I went home Christmas Eve, sat down in my recliner for a little while, knowing that I had to get up because my coffee cakes were not made yet. So I think we started coffee cakes at about 10, 10 o'clock. And thankfully, Melody decided to stay up long enough to help me. I finally was able, after they had cooled off enough, was able to wrap them at 3 in the morning. I've often told you I go home and watch the Vatican worship service, and I did again this Christmas Eve. I don't need to, by the way, you don't need to understand a word of Latin. You know, that high school dead language you had to take, if you're old enough to remember that. We finally, about the time we arrived in high school, got to take Spanish as an alternative. 
that was a lot more a lot more meaningful because it was a living language. But in the church in Rome on Christmas Eve, much is in Latin. Though they have made turns, there was some some scripture was read in French, some in English this year, and then the gospel was read in Italian. But much of the worship service itself, which is in the, in the Vatican, is really about doing what the psalmist asked people to do, was done in Latin. But they provide an interpreter who was from Chicago, a Catholic priest from Chicago, an Italian priest who came and guided people who didn't understand the Latin Mass through that Mass as part of the worship. This year was different. It was different here. Yes, it rained, and you know we all melt in the desert if it rains. We just cannot leave our homes because we might get wet. Or it's a little too chilly with the rain coming down at night for us to get out. Or we don't like to be out after dark. I'm reaching that age. I don't like to be out after dark driving unnecessarily anymore. But this year in the Vatican, instead of, instead of the congregation responding with um, a, a very vocal response, it was much quieter in most of the responses. The interplay from altar to congregation were handled mostly by the choir because everybody was masked in the congregation. And in fact, they did the mass early because they had to have everybody out before midnight out of the Vatican area because Italy just started a new, um, what do you call it, uh, it's out of my head. A curfew. A curfew because of, because of the COVID. And they're kind of shutting down the country again. And so the church had to modify when they were going to do their worship, how they were going to do their worship, and it was absolutely beautiful, but it wasn't quite the same because you did not get to hear much from the hearts and mouths of the people who had gathered to worship. It was much quieter than normal. The Pope's message was about Christ and God being in all of the small things. Here's God present in the birth of this child in Bethlehem in a, a barn or a stable or a cave. And God is fully present in this very tiny, small child. And it would be later that Jesus would take many opportunities to address those things which had seemed to be kind of the small things around him in the world. You know, he didn't come to defeat the powerful and military might of Rome. Instead, he dealt with the things that were localized. He dealt with illness and disease and communities of people who were poor who needed to be fed. In, in the picture of the whole world of God's creation, that seems kind of insignificant he did most of his ministry in a very small geographical area. And yet, because of the fullness of God's presence in Christ, that very small geographical area had an impact that spread throughout the world. Because that's how Christ starts. He's, he doesn't... Usually in our lives, Christ doesn't come with a big bang. It's not like the psalmist today. You know, Christ doesn't break in and all of a sudden you're yelling and shouting and giving praise to God in the name of Jesus Christ. No, oh, it's kind of like, I, I feel like maybe in my life I haven't responded the way that was best. That's how Jesus usually starts. Or we get a piece of information we never heard that way before. Some, some scripture reading that you hear addressed on TV or in church that, that really hit you in a different way. That's Christ working in small ways. And the power in all of that 
is that it works in our lives. I never learned very well from somebody verbally assaulting me with their knowledge. In fact, what I usually do is set up a barrier right away. Because I don't find that helpful. I don't find that a way in which I can learn and, and gain information. Because you get too defensive. Instead, I do much better if doing the Bible study that we're doing now on, on Monday and Wednesday, all of a sudden something hits me that never touched me before. I've been preaching for 37 years on December 30th. I have never preached the same sermon twice. Why is that? Because in the glory and power of God's word, it rarely speaks to us constantly in the same way. It's truths like the fact that Jesus is our Savior, has died for our sin and brokenness, that we might be right with Almighty God in this life and on into the next. That truth stays the same, but how the truth of God's word hits us in the moment of our lives when it comes to us changes. It comes to us in a way that we can understand, not when I was 14, but that now that I'm 70, I'm lying by here, folks. Just have to excuse the bending the rule a little bit. I understand things differently at 70. And I suspect I will at 87. That's true for all of us. We, we are in many different places throughout our lives. But God's word still comes to us to speak to us in those places. But in many, 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 I would say nearly infinite ways. Because from day to day, you and I are not the same. So all of those wonderful things to which call, Paul calls people who have Christ in their lives, he calls them to live in certain ways, to act toward others in certain ways, to live a life of Christ that does honor and glorifies and praises Christ and the might and power of the Creator, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to give thanks for the presence of the Spirit. By the way, it's that still small voice that Scripture talks about. That's the one that comes to us when we change and we hear something in a different way. It's, it's the Spirit of Christ, who Christ gifted to his disciples and all believers, who comes and just touches us in a slightly different way. We, we can only imagine the courage it took for Mary to tell Joseph she was pregnant. But the angel came to her in the quiet of the night and told her this powerful story of what was going to happen and who she would be as the mother of the Son of God. And, and Mary offers this beautiful prayer that we call the Magnificat. She responds out of faith and trust in God to keep his promise and to keep her alive at the hands of the people who would like to get rid of her because she has broken all the social barriers of her time. She is a young woman pregnant without being married. And then Joseph goes through the same thing, and God sends the message of an angel to tell Joseph to buck up and get it right, because Mary is not lying. She is not telling him some fabricated thing to get out of trouble. Instead, they are both called to be the worldly parents of the Son of God.
Imagine what would happen in your life today if that call were placed on you. Would you do what Mary has done and offer this wonderful and beautiful prayer of praise and thanksgiving for the, the bountiful blessings of God when you're faced with all of the derision and the accusations of the world around you? See, the power of Christ that resides in us at this Christmas time is that we know in this little small package in Bethlehem comes the greatest gift we have ever known in our lives. That is the living presence of God's only begotten Son who has come to bear the brokenness and sin of me and of you and of all people who have existed and of the wrong things in creation itself has come to heal all of that. Come to heal me, come to heal you, come to heal all people in the world and save us from death. That's what we know about the child in Bethlehem. It's, it should be so much easier for us than it was for the people who had to come to terms with Jesus in the, the time of his life. Sometimes that's true for us and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it takes us years to figure it out. Not because we haven't been approached, not because we haven't been told, not because we haven't been taught, not because we have not heard the word of God, but we just aren't there yet. It hasn't made that big a difference. But it will. And that's really the good news for us today. In the midst of all of the loud songs and banging drums and blowing trumpets and playing harps and yelling at the top of our lungs about our Creator who has done all things for all people, who has done all things for this planet, who has done all things for the universe itself. We generally find ourselves at the side of the manger in our faith lives, often wondering, can this really be true? Is this all really possible? And God's answer is, if you're in Minnesota, it's yes, sure, you betcha. But if you live someplace else in the country, it's yes, it is all true. And it is all meant exactly for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. creation uh, and, and with thanksgiving for the powerful gift of God in our lives. Gracious Lord, we thank you for sending your Son, 
not as a powerful and mighty king in earthly ways, but as a, a small child who bore the truth and light that can come only from you in all of its power and might. We thank you for your word being shared with us through the disciples who wrote and other writers of the Bible in the New Testament who helped reveal for us the power of this gift which seems so small and insignificant in, in such a, a small place in the world. He didn't come through Rome and the power of the military and the might of the number of, of members of Rome's army. Instead, he came in the still small voice of the night with a, with a comet brightly star, shining down on him, guiding those who could see, whose hearts knew, who had listened to the angels and read the signs, only a few of them, which came to him to bear witness to the power of his presence in the world. Help us always to do the same thing, to see with eyes that you give us, to hear with ears that truly listen, and to learn in our hearts and minds about the power of this child of Bethlehem and how he transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. <coughs> Gracious Lord, we pray this day for Jim and Janet Welch, that you'll be with them to continue healing them from their physical issues. We pray for Jim Blair's sister, Janet, that you might be with her to continue healing her body. And be with Jim. We, we will continue pray, uh, to pray and be persistent, Lord, that Jim gets a miracle of light in that eye that is now too dark. And we pray for Jim that his doctor's treatments for kidney stones will continue to move forward. Help Jim to remember that sometimes you work in small ways first. And we pray for healing and and fullness of health for Jim. We pray today too for Debbie's mother-in-law, for Jeff's mom, uh, for Mary Jean. Uh, she had a health crisis yesterday and is in intensive care in the hospital. Be with the Keene family as they deal with these issues for her. She is 96, Lord, and it seems that perhaps she has been ready to come home for a while. Be with Jeff and his siblings. Keep them in your care. Help them to know the power of your love for their mother's life and for them. Hear us, O oh God. All right, this must be a joke on the pastor. There we go. You know, I have enough trouble with pages getting them apart without you sticking them together. Gracious Lord, we continue our prayers for Dave Beecham, too. He's now battling uh, sight issues after an accident uh, where he received a head injury. We pray that the doctors he's working with will be able to find a way to help that sight problem improve. And keep Dave in your care as he just celebrated another Christmas without his wife. And each of these special days that comes now will be difficult. But lift David up along with his children, with Mark and Leanna, and hold them in your special care as they go through all of these events where Julie's not present any longer in, in uh, physical form. But keep her alive in their hearts and help them to know the power of your love that is for them and has already been with Julie, taking her into your eternal care. Hear us, O oh God. 
Gracious Lord, we pray uh, for Dave's business that it might grow. We pray for Dave's sister-in-law, Lori, as she uh, continues to grieve the kind of unexpected death of her husband. Hold before her the, the sure and certain light and truth of the resurrection. Be with Jerry Morris, who is healing still, with Terry Pina, who continues to have her knee healed. Be with Pastor Ron and Becky, they're in cold weather now in Minnesota, and they'll be back here before too long. And we pray for Candace and Lisa and Alexis, too. Uh, our family spoke with them yesterday for about a half hour. And we give thanks today for the internet ministry of this congregation because they have yet to be able to find a congregation that meets their need in Hawaii. And so they continue to worship with us, even though it seems so very distant and separated by time during the day, they are faithful in their worship, sir, in their worship at our services. Be with them and keep them, all three of them, in your special care. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for our good friend, Linda McMaster, who continues to struggle uh, uh, about moving forward to regain her physical ability and about getting home and living independently again. She's had a very hard road this last year. Bless her life with healing and hope. Hear us, O oh God. And gracious Lord, we continue our prayers for the child who you know from Safford who has been through so much. That child has survived in ways that no one has expected. And we believe that is through the power of prayer and your intervention because of our prayer. Hold this child in your loving care and bring your healing. Hear us, O oh God. All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our communion hymn today is, the words are by Martin Luther. I don't believe the music is. I'm going to look right now and see. Yes, the music is attributed to Martin Luther. There are lots of things attributed to Martin Luther that may not be real. Um, but this is a Christmas hymn that he has definitely written the text for. So um, we're doing verses 1 through 3, and believe it or not, he really is a true Lutheran. Verses 12, 13, and 14. <laughs> Let us prepare our hearts and minds now to re receive the sacrament of our Lord and Savior. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come to receive the sacrament of our Lord. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Our closing song is Cold December Flies Away. I don't know that Cold December has been here yet, but it might next it might this next week at the close of the year get to us. What? Yeah, cold and rainy. <laughs>
the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.